So, um, so the next question really is around um, some of, you know, we talked about, you know, that Spark is, you know, is wonderful, but it certainly isn't there completely yet. So, you know, if you could talk about sort of the number one limitation or challenge that you see with using Spark today, what would that be? Dan? I think the really the number one challenge I would say to customers today is just uh, learning Scala and getting getting into the system, right? And, and the support's there from the vendors. The opportunity to learn these things is there, but like anything else, it's a new technology and it's 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 a slow ramp up. Wow, I guess you the controversial guy. Okay, um, I would agree that uh, some skills is obviously a big factor. The other is, to be frank, um, Spark is new and there's bugs. And uh, we have customers in production with Spark successfully, but we've also had customers that have tried to get in production and have encountered some interesting challenges in the Spark runtime. I mean, the, the MapReduce paradigm has, let's see, now my years right, let's see, I'm going to go with uh, seven years, right? Seven years of engineering behind it, and it has seven years of debugging. Literally thousands of companies have used it debugged it, troubleshot it. Spark just isn't there yet. So it's it's just early days. It's as simple as that. Now that's not a statement about the technology, that's a statement of the time for the technology. I sincerely hope a year from now that won't be an issue and then we can focus on why Spark is awesome, because I think Spark is awesome. So I do think Spark is awesome. And I do agree with it. It, it, it is young. And I think there are some bugs. One of the main challenges I think is, is Scala, which is the reason why I think that we should have better support for the Python bindings, first class support for the Python bindings. Um, and also, I would like, it, it's weird, it's one of those things that, that's, that's kind of, it's almost a regression. They had a really fantastic first class REPL when Spark first came out. This is before it moved to Yarn or whatever. They sort of backed away from that. They haven't gotten that quite working on Yarn yet. I'd love to see that. I think that's going to shift around. If you see a lot of the blog posts around Spark, you see them using it in standalone mode and stuff like that. I'd, rather, I'd like those those to work because I think the REPL actually brings the developers along, having those easy easy examples. So I, I'd, I'd love to see that. Okay. Yeah, so I have a slightly di different opinion just because um, I think of the panel, I'm the only one that contributes to Spark. And so I deal with it on a daily basis, and I know, and, I, and I've probably written over 100 jobs in it. So you can totally, um, just like anything with Hadoop, if you use Hadoop at all, you can shoot yourself in the foot real easy, right? And Spark's a little young in terms of people shooting themselves in the foot. Um, you can definitely get to production. We have lots. We have we have a good deal of customers in production and the. User example I'll show later today, they're in production. Um, so it will get better, um, but it's totally workable as it is right now. In terms of Spark on Yarn, uh, CDH 5.1, Spark is on Yarn. Uh, we, that's a great, that's exactly where it should be. Um, and in terms of issues I've had with it, so like I said, one of the things I'm building right now is a Spark and HBase integration. And uh, one of the issues we have is Spark's main goal is going to be the center that brings all these parts together in terms of execution, right? There's definitely going to be other execution engines, but Spark wants to be an execution engine that can interact with everything. And one of the problems with that is uh, libraries. And um, just getting through class loader issues and making sure that the libraries are correct. And you know, you, you talk to your vendor, we fix them in a couple minutes, but they exist. Um, but the pros and cons are huge, right? If you do MapReduce... It's the same thing. Right? Well, it's the same thing with libraries. Yeah, but I mean, to, to, to Keith's point, MapReduce is much more baked, but um, build your MapReduce, build your Spark. Your Spark's going to be 10 times faster, or, or some odd, you know, it depends on what you're doing. but. You've gotten to computer science because it's awesome. Be awesome, right? I'm not saying don't write the map, or just don't be pragmatic, but don't throw out awesome out the window. I just have one thing to add. I, I, I think also one, one of the problems with Spark is, actually it's a problem with the ecosystem in general, is understanding when you should use the tool. Understanding the use cases, use it. what yeah. the use cases are. Because if you use, like you said, if you use a hammer to eat you know, a tuna fish sandwich, you're going to have a problem. <laughs> Excellent point. Excellent point. And, and there's no magic. 
There's, yeah, there's no magic. And anybody tells you that something's magic? <laughs> Everything's been done before. Okay. It's just reliving. Great. Thank magic. you. Good insight. Um, so, in the audience, would somebody like to share with us what you feel is, is somewhat of a limitation with this work today, based on your experience? Any insight and thoughts you'd like to share? Then, what's been your experience? No, don't be shy. I know that. Uh, Do I need to pick on somebody? Great. Thank you. And, and by the way, everybody, can you speak into the mic, including our panelists? Thank you. Some people in the back can't hear you. Okay. Sure. My name is Tom. Um, one issue uh, when you go to the website, everything looks kind of cool. You see the functional programming, but once you start running jobs, you run into real issues like serialization. You know, your your code is serialized. <clears throat> you're if you're using Avro, your Avro objects are serialized, and that makes it much more challenging. Can I speak to Avro? Because sure. I'm at Avro. Uh, I've contributed to Avro. And Samir, raise your hand. Which is faster, Avro or Limited, if you're doing an ETL? Yeah. So, OK, if you're writing Avro files, it's one thing. Um, you know, I love Avro, but I never, ever, ever, I, I've probably never used it in my last you know, 20 solutions. Um, uh, it, it has some value, but like it, we, we definitely identify that uh, you know, delimiter text is way faster. And if you're going to store it, store it as something like Parquet, um, my Hortonworks friend is here, so he's going to say ORC, but you get the point. Um, uh, the columnar file formats are much more efficient than the block level compression. It's just the nature of how they organize their entropy. Um, what if you have an existing uh, system and it heavily uses Avro? What are your recommendations on um, migrating to something? You can send me an email later. I know that there's ways to deal with that. I've had uh, essays solved at other accounts. So, um, okay. Thank okay. You. Let's make sure you reach out to uh, Ted later. Any other thoughts? Feedback? Okay. 